All right, gang. So we are going to go ahead and get going now. It is Friday, August 30th already, and this is Forward Focus. So welcome. Thank you guys for joining me here today. We are going to start with the overall market here for this session. So we've had a very active morning today. Let me pull up some charts here for you guys. Here's the Russell. We'll just start with this one. Oops, or not. <laughs> Helps if I don't click outside the screen, outside the box. Where'd it go? Slippery little guy. Oh, all right, we'll just close this. There we go. <laughs> okay. Got it now, it keeps running away from me. All right, so here is our 120 minute chart of the Russell. And I'm actually gonna go back to the daily here to start with. So here's our daily time frame. And what we've had going on in the overall market really is it's been in this zone of congestion. And you can see that really clearly on the Russell. And it's basically all month it's had a smaller zone of congestion within that bigger zone. And we just came back to the upper end of that level here this morning, just kind of pushed into it, really strong momentum. Yesterday, nice two wave move here, you can see on the 6,000 tick chart. I call this a one, two, three pattern coming off of a nice double bottom. This is um, in League of Traders, we've been talking about those second chance entries uh, over the last couple of weeks. So when you get pivot and you miss a trade, your second chance setups, this is a perfect example of one of those. So nice two wave move here, kind of starts to exhaust things. Sometimes when we see the same amount of correction here, we will see a third push. So as we started into the day, it's a lot of dropping down to smaller time frames to watch how momentum is changing on those smaller time frames. Usually you get a two wave move and then the third wave move um, will all struggle. But if you already have a level where it's not, it's only like two thirds of the way back up to those previous highs, that still makes this entire zone up here the resistance zone. So it can still push higher into that level. So that made things a little bit trickier here going into the day. You can see an example of this on the 19th. So it had a little bit of a faster correction first and then more of a time correction, really similar to what we had going on over here. Now, at this point, we are basically similar impulse wave development, maybe not quite back up there, but pretty close, getting pretty close to that level. So that's where we were exhausting this heading into the day. Let me put that line on there so you can see that exact comparison. So here's the last upside impulse wave and here's the current impulse wave. Look at that. Look at how perfect that was right there. So what we had was the measured impulse wave, but we also had that extra risk of the push into those previous highs. So let's drop down and look at the smaller time frame. And this is where things began to shift. So kicking off, it hit the high pretty fast. We go down even smaller here. And you can start to see things begin to roll over as we were going into pre-market action. This was really clear on uh, the NASDAQ as we were going into the open. We started to see momentum shift on smaller scale. So we had these stronger bounces, weaker bounces, and then more of the base. And this is really what kicked off the selling in the pre-market ahead of the open. Like I said, the NASDAQ was even clearer on this. I'm gonna go pull up the NASDAQ chart for you. So here we can see, this was the action going into the open. This is just a 15 second chart, but you can still see the momentum changing here, especially this last portion. So it started off quickly, shifted and shifted, and that led to a drop right before 
the open. We only had like a couple of minutes before the open. And really we've been following through on that throughout uh, the entire day so far. I'm going to pull this up here on the daily time frame on the NASDAQ so you can see where we're at here. It's the same type of situation as we saw in the Russell. It's com coming into the upper end of that trend channel. What we talked about in League of Traders is this is a bigger move up. And then we've got these lows here. So there, there was still the potential that this could push back up into this upper level. If we look for distancing between highs, you know, good breakdown zone is closer to over here than it is where we are at right now. So this still had room to try to, you know, push up, turn back around. It all comes down to what's happening on those smaller time frames and how momentum shifts on the smaller time frames. Um, let me give you guys a little bit bigger inch today chart here. I'm going to show you the 300 tick. And also the three minutes here. So here is what we were seeing as we were going into the start of the day. Just really smooth creeping higher throughout the morning and then we start to see things kind of widen up here and this is where the shifting really comes into play this is a slower move up than over here but this could have still based here at this point and broken higher it's how the momentum shifted within this congestion that led to that breakdown so it's really important not only to pay attention to what's going on on the larger time frames, but also to watch those smaller time frames as well. If I go down to the one minute chart, you can see that shift even better. Especially that last portion of it. This is um, called an avalanche. So it's actually a shallow avalanche because you've got your two wave correction here and then the longer base. And with a shallow avalanche, we usually see momentum pick up. We'll usually see a pretty strong move coming out of that. Unfortunately, it's right before the open. It, it's kind of hit or miss, you guys. If you want to take trades right into the open or right into the close, you've got extra risk involved with it because a lot of times what can happen is if this didn't get going right away, it could have whipped up like that and then went. So it, it's easy for things to take out stops when they trigger right at the open. So you kind of have to weigh that against, you know, what your comfort level is as far as risk goes. I I hate it when we have such gorgeous setups that are triggering right ahead of the open or right ahead of the close because I know that there's a lot more risk involved, especially when you're a newer trader and you're not as good with really rapid market moves. We had a great setup the other day too into the close here and uh, unfortunately that was also triggering right at the end of the day so we've seen a couple of those that have been right smack at the open and the close lately right now we're just doing a retest we're at a level where things are going to um, widen up here so we're going to get probably more of the back and forth type of action throughout the afternoon. You can see we ended up with a pretty good two wave drop. This is a one, two, three here within the bigger one. And uh, so we'll probably do more of the widening up here at this point throughout the afternoon. I'm going to show you the support on the bigger time frame though. 15 minute here. Where we're at, let me erase those is right at that previous high. So those, those, those of you that saw in uh, League of Traders, I use this as a buy zone here, just for a little bit of a bounce um, trade coming off of this. So it's right at that perfect retest level. And intraday what we saw happening is right as it hit that level, we had this momentum reversal. So the momentum reversal was perfect, uh, perfectly timed to go in with that um, other reversal or with the um, previous high rather and then we even saw a little bitty momentum shift here at the end of that uh, third low as well so that kind of helps kick off this little bounce that we're seeing right now and then we're getting the 
the widening up happening here starting to happen up larger time frame like i said this could still either go either way as we head into next week it's just really tricky uh where would i enter on that i'll i'll show you guys where i entered i'll show you my execution actually hold on here's where i entered so you're right at right about there was exactly where I entered. So right coming off that third low, we've been talking about these second chance entries and such um, throughout the week. This was also a measured move here to here. And that's why I had an order on the books there. Where would I have entered on the way down? Um, on the way down, you had to do the, um, up here, let me show you guys. That, I guess, scroll back to the head of the open here. So really your trigger was right in here, um, right at like 924-ish. And it's easier to see it on a time frame chart than the tick chart. Let me show you that. So here's the time frame chart. So you can see the time frame chart. What we look for, is we want this breakdown to happen right about when you got a measured move between these lows here in the space. So what I've taught you guys in League of Traders this week is to use this bounce ahead of the breakdown to enter. And you can even use a smaller channel break if you're not as comfortable with that. So you've got a couple of opportunities just depending upon which strategy you used, whether you used um, the one we've been talking about in League of Traders throughout the entire week, where you basically have each of these levels as your entry, you're looking at the retest zone of these previous highs, or you can use the more traditional levels too. The problem with the traditional levels is it's harder to get filled, so things can really go. After the open, you have a second chance here. So what you're basically looking for is the bounce back up into the breakdown zone, and you'll wanna put your order on the books because a lot of times it's like this, it pops up, and goes right back down. So you're relying on that larger time frame to really keep going with the open. Now, the risk you have with this, like we talked about throughout the week, is that it could pop up in here and do a two-wave move. And like I talked about just as we got started, it could even pop up above this high. So when you use a, an entry like that, it's best to keep your stop based upon that larger time frame. Just kind of be more cautious with it or really manage it really close um, like on a smaller time frame it's hard this is right at the open a lot of times this is only a one wave move so we talk a lot about two wave moves as being the best place to enter but with these second chance entries that um, I've taught you guys throughout the last two weeks a lot of times we only get that one wave and it's just a, an initial pop back up into the breakdown zone it won't even necessarily come up all the way to the smaller breakdown might only come up to the previous lows like we see here and then it usually goes really quickly so uh go back and start with last tuesday's class last tuesday since we were i was out on monday um we combined uh, mentor monday with league live and last week's um, sessions were really really great on these advanced entry techniques so go back and basically study every session from last week and then this week picked up with we talked about um, basically the second chance entries within the context of head and shoulders patterns basically where you're getting in within the shoulder um, of the head and shoulders so that's what we focused on this week and next week we're going to go back to basics so we're going to talk about um the really core head and shoulder patterns focusing more for um, beginner traders and those that are not quite at the advanced confidence level yet so still really great setups just showing you how to get into those a little bit better than um, traditional market analysis so that's what's on the roster for next week and we will be having mentor monday on monday i know it's labor day so if you miss it you can um, catch up in the um, member section and also go if you're a league of traders member be sure to go ahead and register for it anyways because you'll get the replay link uh, sent out two hours afterwards from 
GoToWebinar. So they'll send that out to you right away. All right, let's go take a look at some of these other markets here. So really, you know, this larger time frame, looking for this to possibly do a head and shoulders here on the daily. It could even go up for like a momentum reversal. We just have to, again, still keep an eye on how the momentum is shifting in here because it's really up in the air, you guys. As we go into next week, it could go either way based upon the trend placement here. There's not a major bias on the larger time frames alone. It's all going to come back down to the smaller bias like it did this morning. All right, let's go take a look at some of the other markets. We'll start with some of the uh, Forex pairs. So I'm going to put our monthly time frame here. This is our euro dollar on the monthly. Widen this up. So what we've seen on the monthly time frame is that, let me remove this. We haven't had like a huge bias on this monthly time frame for, oh my gosh, like what has it been, like a year or more? It's been pretty much stuck in this congestion. And so what we've been watching is within this last portion here, where's the momentum been playing out? And right now, it's focusing on trying to come back down to here. So we're looking at this, showing the potential to kind of do this widening megaphone. It's not a picture-perfect megaphone. It look more like that. But that's what it's trying to do. And of course, what we usually see with a megaphone that is a stronger one for a continuation down is it will pause more down here and then keep going at that point. So we're kind of getting a midway pause, which is what has made this a little bit trickier because that means it comes into support in here. So it could have shifted momentum and pulled back up again here. And this is what we were watching for a couple of months ago and it just never happened. We got some smaller time frame bounces, some good little day trade and swing trade moves, but nothing that has followed through on the larger time frames. So if I go up to the weekly, you'll start to see that a little bit better. So it came into the third load zone, low zone here, tried to do a bounce. We saw some good intraday activity, but it just couldn't develop into anything bigger yet. So this is something we're just focusing on the smaller time frames. Right now, my bias is more on the downside just because it's trying to break the lower end of this channel. Here, let me show you the daily chart. Go into this even tighter. And the nice thing about this is that in recent months, we've had really good two wave moves back and forth. We had that nice two wave bounce we talked about in June. We have nice two wave move back down here to find support. Now it's trying to go and do this would be a bigger two wave here where it treats this as the congestion in between. So that's my bias on the euro dollars that we're still going to see this continue to push lower. Let's go check out some of these other currency pairs here. I haven't been trading currencies nearly as much this year. I've been doing a lot of the for uh, the futures and gold and oil a little bit more kind of go in and out of focus for what markets I focus on and there's not really one that I love more than the other maybe I just get bored or something I don't know <laughs> but all everything we talk about you guys know applies to basically any market so what we've got going on on the dollar yen is it been in that huge symmetrical triangle since 2015 
And with symmetrical triangles, it's common to get false breaks one way and then see them break the other way, go into bigger trading range. So that's basically what we're looking at over the next five years. And um, this can easily go back and forth. So we can see the breakdown. We could see it come back up. We could even see this kind of base out here and then try to break down back into this zone, just depending on how this momentum plays out over here. So we're starting to get that initial break lower, but a lot of times, like I said, it does a false break and then it flips around and then goes through the upper end of the channel. So that's what I'm anticipating would happen next on the dollar yen. Let's put that up on a weekly now. So the momentum on the smaller time frames on the weekly is showing that that is indeed a possibility because you have a stronger move here and then it's trying to shift momentum here. So this could further shift. We might see one more wave down. It doesn't necessarily need it. Uh, one more wave would kind of help flush it out a little bit better, but um, definitely would be looking for that to bounce again. And I would expect it to have a stronger bounce going back up and looking for a two wave bounce. So right now, that is what I'm looking for on the dollar yen, and we'll put that on the daily too. So you can see the daily, we've got this extra megaphone down here. So we had sort of momentum-esque reversal type of move here, but since this was so steep, only had a two-way bounce. We saw this yesterday uh, in the overall market too, same similar type of move. And then the widening up here. So this still looks like it might push a little bit more and then we'll see if that can do another drop or not. It doesn't have to. It would just be nice if it did because it would flush things out a little bit better. So even if it does it just with the widening up of the megaphone here, that would help give us a stronger bounce in a couple of weeks or so. Well, yeah, a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe two months. But that would be ideally what we will see for the next main impulse move on that. Um, pound dollar. We got measured move zones in here. This is kind of a widening up zone. This could easily go retake that low on the daily chart. monthly definitely still has that potential too. This is basically trying to form a 2B on the monthly. So this goes to that slightly lower low. That would be perfect for a bounce setup on the weekly time frame. You could expect a move basically similar to this off of that low. And it could even go further, just depends on how this momentum plays out here. Um, currently, it's it's pretty decent. You've got a faster move and then a slower move. Like we talked about last week, this huge drop here has impacted this. So that's why we've got the shift here. And when we look at the overall market right now, that's partially what we're dealing with too. So let me just put the NASDAQ on here, kind of in the background find the right chart. See this drop here on the NASDAQ? If this tries to break lower here, that's what we would end up happening. So here's where I traced um, the pound. So you can see that here, that shift. And let me go back and show you that right next to it. So kind of line things up here. So what we're looking at in our comparison moves is the two wave move up here. And then things have kind of, you know, moved away from that a little bit. We're kind of like right here. This had a slower pullback. This one was faster. Um, but that is the other possibility with this. So we have to kind of keep that in mind here. The the um, 
timing on that larger uh, daily chart had that previous high over here. So, well, well, it was a lower high, but it had it over there. And so that's that timing, the aspects that we're going to be looking for on the NASDAQ that could easily play out longer. But if it tries to break down, you might not get that easy um, right shoulder on the NASDAQ. So this is a possibility here on the NASDAQ. And again, we're just going to be watching those smaller time frames to see what that happens. Um, but right now, the pound dollar still looks to push lower. It could get a little choppier as it gets down in here into this previous low. Weekly, basically, your congestion as your midway point here is this. So you're looking for that as a measured move as your supports, basically that low. And then I would like to see an extra flush to have a strong, the strongest buy set up on that. Here, when it hits a measured low and this previous low, you'll probably get a little bounce for a couple of days, maybe even a couple of weeks. But it, it's not as likely to do one of these bigger impulse moves. That would be more likely to happen if it can bounce a little and then go and do a smaller to be and turn around. Kind of like what we saw happening on oil on, what was it, Monday or Tuesday? I'll show you guys that oil trade here quick. That was my best trade on oil all week. It was awesome. Let me pull that up. here Let's show that to you guys um, basically what oil did was it had a 2t with a 2t so what you'd be looking for on the pound dollar is a 2b with a 2b we've had a really great week here in league of traders let me scroll back and find that for you guys That was one of our two T's. A lot of trades this week. All right, here we go. Let's see. Well, well, where are you at? It's been a big 2T type of week. We had all kinds of 2Ts. I didn't realize I posted that much. Here we go. Maybe I'm just going to go back and... Uh, let's see, maybe I scrolled past it. I might just go back and grab it from the regular chart here. Oh, here it is. Well, here's um, one of the follow-up posts. So what we had here was a combo with the 2T here, and then it went and had a smaller 2T in the highest. So this is just one example of a combo trade. The one I wanna show you is, let me see. Cause I wanna show you that comparison to what's going on in the pound dollar. So it's on the 25th. I'm just gonna go grab the chart off of my other computer. That is going to be the easiest way because I posted too much to find it faster. Okay, so grab 
that one, and then I'm gonna grab a bigger time frame too. All right, let's go. to the end. Okay, so here, whoops, that's not the end. Here. You're getting a retest of this zone here. We're kind of, you know, breaking down. You had all of these previous congestions, it just had popped back up into that zone. And then what we had happening intraday was, and this is just a different version of this that was on that other chart. It went up to a 2T here, and then it did a smaller 2T. So this is uh, the main trade that I had um, kicking off the start of the week. And this action up here, this is the type of thing that we could see happening on the pound dollar. So you'll get the two the two way push in the in the pound dollar it would be into the previous level and then you would get that extra little push. So let me show you that pound dollar comparison. So you get the two way push and then you would get that extra push that would have that extra little two to be on top of it. So we've seen a couple of times that's happened throughout the week. And that was just one of them I could remember off the top of my head. If you scroll through the logs for the main alerts channel in Liga Traders, you'll see a lot of a lot of examples. Uh, Dollar Swiss, I'm just not excited about this market. It has been in a range for so long. This again was the zone for Phoenix setup it was gonna go. So you have that momentum reversal type of move and then the slower move up. We just saw this, right? Momentum reversal, kind of slower move up. It leads the door open that this can break down again, but we're not seeing that breakdown yet. It's just still holding in this range. And there hasn't been a primary bias at this end of the range for a break yet kind of starting to lean towards breaking down, but there's no real reason for it to yet. So, you know, time-wise, it's not out of um, potential that this could go and be trying for a shallow Phoenix, but there's just nothing to give us any confirmation yet on this monthly time frame. And I suspect it's gonna be a few more months before we really see any movement on that. So at this point, really could go either way. I'm kind of leaning towards it doing a shallow Phoenix, but what we've seen in other cases where we had the momentum reversal, the two-wave move up, we've seen it break down. I just would have expected it to have done that in here instead of, again, pushing out further. So this would have been where it would have gone for the core continuation. But now if we go and look at the entire move, we're coming into a level that is okay as far as time development goes. Um, let's see, questions. GLD. Okay, I'm going to finish up our um, Forex and then we'll go take a look at gold. So GLD or um, not GLD, the uh, US Canadian dollar here is kind of that three push lows. Then we've got the retest here in this case. And this is just trying to base out. So this could easily base out longer. You can see things trying to sort of shift here. This could even open this up to try to pull back down sharper more sharply um, and go like that. So again, we've got to watch how momentum shifts in here. That's going to impact 
whether this manages to do a phoenix or if it pulls back down in here first. This is a really good support level in here. But that same momentum shift that we saw on the NASDAQ this morning, that same thing could happen here on the US Canadian dollar very easily. And right now that's what I'm leaning towards just because of the current way that this is playing out. I'm leaning to it uh, towards it doing this. Aussie dollar. Nice two wave move, kind of at a widening up zone still. That still has room that could push here into this low. Let's go to a smaller time frame. Daily chart, you can see it had a megaphone and it hasn't been able to follow through on that megaphone. So what you want to see is with your one, two, three, four, five, you're back down at the lower end, you want to see immediate reaction off of that to really get it buying. Of course, the trend placement is the problem here. See this momentum shift in here? This is the type of thing that can happen on the Canadian dollar. Basically, all the way back from here into here, shifting leading to that breakdown. There was a lot more downside over here. This is very minimal so far, so bad position timing for a megaphone as a reversal pattern. So this is still looking weaker as we head into next week. Not really great setups on it. I'd kind of stay away from this right now unless you see something intraday on the short side, but daily time frame, it's, it's not that pretty yet. Do I see a possible top on the dollar USD and okay, let's pull that up. Yeah, that's a good measured move there and you're coming into a third high. So I definitely do see that, Adam. That's actually one of the better Forex pair charts that I've seen here for a while. Let me put the... Um, Fibonacci extension on here. Wrong way. Clear this. So we're not quite up at a hundred percent extension. We're pretty darn close. I know I have one of these charts that I can do this to. There we go. I do not remember off the top of my head how to add that to my chart, but here. I haven't been using my trade station on this computer, except for you guys. So here's the 100% right there on that portion of it. So this could even do um, the three high and then do a two-way push up into that high, but I definitely think we're seeing a little bit of resistance here on the short term. This could easily pull back in today. You got a megaphone here on the 30-minute too, so good spacing on that to pull off of here too. I think if you're going up to the 9.4 level, you're going to be looking at more, it's going to be closer to that 
Let's make this uh, monthly. So with that momentum, so the short-term uh, exhaustion here, but if you're looking at that as a larger move, here's your 9.4 zone that you mentioned. I think if it gets up to there, you, your momentum is going to be strong enough on this monthly chart that it could actually push through that level. You'll probably get a short-term reaction, like on a weekly chart. Um, but then it would have a better chance of trying to push up a little bit further, probably about to almost 10, like 9.9 .9 is what we could be looking at on the monthly. Let me go back again to the weekly. Pull back a little bit. So basically what you'd be looking at is with the current resistance level in here, the 100%, we're looking at that last wave up. So here is the correction on this two wave move. So the next resistance is this 100% on this last portion of the two wave move. But if it goes past that point, then what you're looking at is uh, this whole move over here and then looking at extensions of that. So you'd be looking at those extensions as well as the closer impulse move extension. Here's the closer one, and then this would be the bigger one. So you would want to watch that for the extension levels. All right, let's pull up gold. I'm going to guess have a question on GLD here first. So we're right at the... Um, measured move that we were at over the last couple of weeks. And this is a widening up zone. Basically, you'll usually get a lot more back and forth here. I know we talked about this over the last last week or so. Um, you've got your Phoenix, one, two, three, really strong. So you're going to get this to push um, back and forth more. It's probably going to go higher on the weekly, on the monthly, but you're going to open up the range more. So this Chen channel here is going to widen up now at this point. I think most of my trades this week have been in gold on the futures, though not GLD. On the daily, you can kind of see that a um, little bit of a slowdown as it's coming into that upper measured move here. So here's the initial two wave, here's the two wave correction. So your measured move is right around in there. I'll add the extension on here so you can see exactly where it is. So we're right at about the 76.4. So it, it'll be up here. Put it on the wrong one that I can't wiggle. If you guys know off the top of your head how to add this, squishing thing over here. Let me know. <laughs> I'll have to look it up again. Been too long since I've looked that up. My trading computer has it on all of the charts, so it's already set on everything. Here's the 100% extension. So you could see it could still push up into there. It's just trying to sh uh, slow momentum as it's getting up to there. And then I, again, I think that we'll get this widening up so it can still push higher. Where would I put the fib fan? Um, it kind of depends on if you're looking at your daily chart or you're looking at like a bigger, a bigger time frame. If I go up to the monthly, what we've got going on here on the monthly is, I'm going to show you this first. Oops, come on. Right, move there. So for our fib fan on this one to start with, is you're looking at this move here um, as your main one. It, it hasn't reacted to too many of those levels. This is a little bit too steep to have it here. So a lot of times when you have it this steep, 
it'll only have uh, temporary reactions like you're, you can see here. So the bigger move to go from the absolute high to low puts that resistance up there, which makes sense given what we were just seeing on the daily chart. It definitely has that room to pull up there. If you were going to go and look at it the other way, on the upside here, this would have been the first one, which you can see held the, that 76.4 zone really well here. And then you would line up that 61.8 with that first low, and that gives you that next level. So this up here is going to be that resistance that's going to correspond to um, what we just saw on the downside. So up in here, closing up into this one. The nice thing about the fans is that when you flip them over, they serve as resistance levels too. So you not only have them as support, they'll also serve as resistance. So the key thing that I did here was I took the fan from this low and I didn't take it to this high. I took it to that high to get this support, but after that broke, I lined up the 61.8 with that pivot low, and that is what gives you that next support zone. So a little bit of tricky business here. I guarantee you will not learn this from anybody else. <laughs> I've never, ever seen any other person play with their fans like this. Um, so that is a nice little trick for lining these up when you're going for a second wave of a correction. Line up that first correction with the 61.8 and it's gonna give you a gorgeous level for support at that 76.4. And it works like almost all the time. You'll find exceptions of course, but I would say like 90% of the time you're gonna see some sort of reaction there when you do that. Um, let's see here. What else would you guys like me to look at today? I can pull up bonds. Let's see. Bonds. If you have any other um, individual stocks you want me to take a look at. We haven't looked at any individual stocks yet today. Wheat. I've been kind of watching wheat. Um, I'll let this load and then I'll come back to this. Uh, BA, Boeing. Boeing here. So we've been following this one for a while. So it had that momentum-esque reversal here, the two-way correction. Did the plus thing here. So this is kind of at a wacky level. It's kind of shifting here again. So this could pull up again, and this might go and do like this. So a head and shoulders. So you could see this going into this type of movement here, where we could actually get that spacing, do a little bit more of a head and shoulders. Because you'll notice this last high, this high, and then this high, they're pretty evenly spaced too. So you have kind of that little baby head and shoulders within the potential to do that bigger head and shoulders on the daily chart. So I think we have a really good possibility of that here. Let me put this on a weekly. Weekly definitely favors it. That would make a lot of sense on the weekly chart too. So what it would be is that this is your left side head and then you're looking for over here for a pull down. We'll see how this momentum plays out, but right now that's a good probability. Apple, I mean, Apple is definitely just in a range, really rapid moves back and forth. So upper end of the range is good resistance, lower end of the range is gonna be really good support, and then it needs something to shift that. So because this pulled up all the way like 76.4%, it could shift and do a 2T because this pulled back like that. It could do that and come up to a higher high. Um, basically then this is what the channel would look like to hold. 
And that possibility is just because this gained momentum on the monthly time frame. Uh, we saw those bigger waves up on the monthly time frame. So that still has that potential on here, but it doesn't have to do that. That would just be like my maximum potential of where this would go would be here. I wouldn't expect it to go any farther than that at all for a long, long time. But that possibility is still there. We just got to watch how this shifts here because it could just hold the range. It doesn't have to go for that higher high. The reason it has the potential for the higher higher is because it had this as a one, two, three up into this breakdown zone. So that can allow that to go into congestion and to go for a 2T pattern on your weekly chart when that happens. When when weekly this again is that risk with the stronger momentum down and the congestion this tries to be a lower it's more likely to do it like this at this point so really more chop in here is what i would expect i i would expect the range on the daily time frame to get more narrow so you'll actually have less follow through on the back and forth movements on the daily chart at this point over the next mm, next month. So I would expect this to continue to chop around here. And then this tries to break down. If it tries to do it coming out of this, it could easily shift like that. So you'll probably get smaller moves than the bigger impulse waves you see back here. and more back and forth. Roku, ooh, good exhaustion on this. See that measured move there? So this is the three wave where each leg has this correction that is about the same amount of time. Again, a, t a price correction first, time correction second. This is very, very exhausted here on the daily time frame, you guys. This should definitely start to correct off this level. Get more back and forth movement. This trend is basically done. It can push higher over, you know, over in here, just depending on how it reacts off of this high. Short term, I mean, I wouldn't even hold this into the weekend if I was swing trading this because it could easily whip down start to get more whippy up here. You're right at measured move for each of these main impulse moves. That is very, very exhausted, short term. And then um, longer term, again, widen up. You can even see a little bit of a baby moment, a uh, baby 2B in here, or 2T in here, baby 2T right here. So that could even pull back at the end of the day coming off of that. The momentum is so strong on the bigger time frames. We wouldn't usually anticipate a total um, trend change. We would expect more corrective type of moves that would whip back up. So even on a correction, you would expect it to be able to whip back up. You'll get the retest. All right, you guys, let's see. Tesla, eh. Haven't done anything with Tesla here for a while. Here's the, that avalanche, the shallow avalanche, but it didn't even go as far as a lot of shallow avalanches can go. This can still easily pull back down to this lower zone though. 200, 190 on the daily needs to kind of shift momentum again here but I wouldn't rule that out we usually go a little faster so it would go you know like that so this little pop last couple of days it's gonna make it harder but I wouldn't totally rule it out until this has gone past like here so I would allow this to do that amount of correction 
time correction, and that's basically your do or die point to break lower. So Monday, Tuesday, if it's gonna break lower again, that those would be the days that it would need to do it on to get back down to the lower end of that range. All right, you guys, I'm gonna wrap this up here today and I'll get this posted up on the website for you. Check my YouTube channel here by the end of the day, you'll see it there. And uh, also, uh, tonyhanson.com backslash Friday, you'll get the replay link there too. Uh, let's see here, I promised you wheat. Hold on, let me put that up quick. Wheat, all right, wheat, so what we're doing on wheat is, I was looking at this to see if this could hold this low here, evenly spaced, to try to do another pop up here before it pulls back down. It didn't do that. So we're still looking at this pulling back into this move here. I know on the monthly timeframes, we were watching for a lot of these grains to try to be able to pull back up again. Let me clear this so you can see this. Because we had these three lows, so we were watching, can this develop into a bigger move? It definitely had room for it to do that, but it needed to have held that upper end, and we just aren't seeing that. It's not even doing a typical flush here that would allow this to turn around. So this is kind of worrisome with um, pricing here as far as uh, wheat goes and a lot of grains too, because if it was going to pop, I wanted it to hold that level to pull back up, and it's just not doing that. So that makes it more likely that this is just a tilted continuation, unfortunately. For those that are looking for prices to pick up here on wheat futures. Aw, thank you, Bo. <laughs> all right, gang. I will see you all on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, next Saturday, I'm doing a women in trading event so you guys will get an invitation to that it, i believe it's free so you can join me on saturday for that so watch your emails for uh your invitation to log in there i'm doing it with anka metcalf and a bunch of other ladies in trading so hope to see a bunch of you all over there as well <laughs> thank you guys